Hello, my name is Mario Ansuria Jr., or Marty for short. Today I'll be giving a video tutorial on Pivotal Tracker, or Tracker for short. Now, a Tracker is a web-hosted, agile-based tool for software development teams. It requires an account, and it's free for nonprofits, public projects, academic institutions, including students. And, and that's about it. However, there is a catch. And the catch is, is that you can only have five private projects with no other collaborators other than yourself, and there's a size limitation of 200 megabytes. Otherwise, they must be public projects. On the other hand, if, uh, if you opt for the monthly paid subscription, this doesn't apply to you. And with that, let's get started. All right, so let's come up with a project. Uh, for this tutorial, I was thinking of having uh, an app on a mobile platform. Uh, let's say iOS. Let's say um, I run a bingo game, and I want users to be able to queue up for a bingo game. Now, a bingo session. And let's say um, they need to queue. But before they need to queue, they need to create an account. So they require, all right, so here goes. I have a bingo queue system, and I want users to be able to go on their iOS device and go on to the Apple App Store, download my app, and then through that app, I would like them to create an account, uh, create a bingo profile, and once they do that, I would like for them to queue up for a bingo game session. Now, ideally, as you know, as as the time as your time comes up for your bingo session, I would like this app to alert you that your bingo session is coming up. That sounds like a good premise, so we're gonna go with that. So I'm gonna call this the iOS Bingo Game Q App System, or Game Cube App. Yeah, that sounds about right. To create an account. Click on sign up. You can create an account here or sign in with Google Plus. I went ahead and created an account, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. No, thank you. When you first log in, you're taken to the dashboard. On the upper left hand side where it says Pivotal Tracker, you can click and switch between all your projects or go back to the dashboard. On the dashboard, you're going to see all your projects, your activity feed, as well as news, messages, and any invitations to other projects. Let's create a project. To create a project, click on the Create a Project button. Under Project Name, we're going to enter the name of our project. I'm going to make this project public. Since I'm using the free account and I want to add collaborators, the project must be public. Otherwise, it requires a paid subscription. I'm going to, I'm going to click on Create Project and create my project. By default, the current backlog and icebox panels are shown. You can enable or disable panels up here, where it says Current, Backlog, Icebox, and Epics. Under More, you have additional options for panels. And that's how you create a project. So let's start working with Tracker. By default, the Current, Backlog, and Icebox panels are enabled. You can enable more panels up here and click on More for additional panels. On the upper left hand side where you see the name of the project, you can click and switch between other projects, create a project, or go back to the dashboard. On the upper right hand side, you can click Help, Manage Your Account, Add a Story, Search Stories, or adjust the velocity. Now this comes down to personal preference, but when working on a project on Tracker, I like to have the Epics panel showing. 
I like to start with epics and then work my way down to other sto to stories. Uh, best way to think about it is one big goal and then breaking it down into smaller tasks to complete that goal. So let's start with our first epic. To create an epic, I'm going to click on the plus sign in the epics panel. I'm going to type in the title of my first epic. Now, one thing to notice is that uh, the UI here is a bit different than from, at least from what I'm used to on OS X and Windows. Basically, the UI is designed to be scanned from the left-hand corner all the way over to the bottom right-hand corner. That's normally how it is. And in fact, I thought it was this way at first because I thought the add button was to add the epic and the cancel was to cancel the whole operation, but that's not actually how it works. Cancel and add refer to the activity portion of this panel. To save the epic, you have to click save right under it. It's a bit weird to get used to, but um, I guess um, I got used to it, so let's click save. And there we have our first epic. By clicking on this little uh, triangle here, you'll get the same menu and then you can change change the description, change the title, and add activities. I'm going to create now our second epic. And there we have our two epics. Now we discussed, uh, I discussed the stories that I would put under each of these and I'm going to go ahead and create them. To create a story I'm going to click on add story. Now initially they appear under the ice box. The ice box is for stories that don't have any priority. Think of it as limbo or put on ice. In fact this could mostly be ignored unless something has a value. But uh, yeah, just think of it as limbo. That's good. So I'm going to enter the first uh, story title, and that's going to be a native iOS app or an iOS device. Now here you can change the story type, estimate the amount of work or uh, time it will take, here you'll see the requester, which is myself. I can also make myself the owner. Owner. I can also follow a story, which is on by default. I can add a description, can add a task, an activity. And the label section is uh, where you can actually link it to an epic. Since this is the first story of my first epic, I'm going to go ahead and link it. Now, remember that, uh, that tip I told you that unlike the left to right design of most modern UIs, this one chooses to have the buttons up here. So when you're finished all here, you click save up here. You're going to see that it's going to link it to our epic, and if you mouse over this bar, it'll show you all the stories linked to this epic and their progress. Right now, our first story is on ice, as you see right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and create our other stories. I'm going to go ahead and link this to our epic, save. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go ahead and create the other stories for the other epic.
Here's our third epic. For I mean our third story for the second epic. Now we're going to create our last one. Whoops. Uh, one thing to note, you can click here and change any of, the, any of the attributes at any time. In this case, I forgot to link it to our epic, which I will be doing now. Nope, oh, and I forgot another one. And there, I created all my stories and linked them to their respective epics. Now, um, when I said before that uh, there aren't exactly sprints, it's more like in the name. The current panel here, you can think this as of your sprint backlog. This is what the team is currently working on, or the current iteration. The backlog is your scrum product backlog. Generally, it should only contain stories that are defined or ready for development and estimated. It should be in priority order, and the way you do that is you basically can just rearrange them. For example, here. You can rearrange them in the same way. So let's define our stories further. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assign points based on how long it should take to accomplish, accomplish each task. So native iOS app that a user, I'm going to give this one three points. You can also do it through here. I'm going to estimate this one as one point. Now notice that once you select points, these buttons disappear and they pop up here. And the only way to change them is if you click on this, on this triangle and manually change it here. Now create an account, I'm going to give this one point. I'm going to go ahead and assign, arbitrarily assign points to each story. Now just, just for a show of concept, I'm going to go ahead and change our velocity to 3. So now, whoops, going to move this one back. I'm going to start by the obvious choice, and that's I need to I need an iOS app before I can do anything. So I'm going to start it. This is my sprint right here. Now, watch what happens when I try to move another three-point story. It goes into the backlog. This story is ready to be worked on. However, based on my velocity. I'm already at capacity, so it goes straight into the backlog. We can go ahead and move them over from the icebox as these stories are ready. You're going to notice that based on the velocity and the estimates you assigned, Cracker will try to predict when each one should be completed by, which is pretty cool. If you look back at epics and you look at the bar, you can see the status of all the stories related to these to these epics, including how many points each one has. Now, what happens when I'm finished with a sprint? Click finish. You can deliver. You can accept or reject a reason. And you can hide this and work on your next one. Some other cool features you can do with Tracker is you can search for keywords and have the results pull up in a separate panel. You can view 
what you're currently working on, and you can add collaborators. To add collaborators, just go under Project, click, and click on Add Remove Members. Since this is a public project, you can add collaborators via their email address or by typing their name if they're already a member. All right, let's get started with Pivotal Tracker for iOS. I'll be using the iPad app. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. First thing you're gonna notice is that there's no dashboard. You only go in between projects. I'm gonna go ahead and select Bingo Game Q app. Now you're gonna notice one difference is that the current and backlog panels are actually combined. They're only differentiated based on the color of the actual tile. You can swipe back and forth to go between the different panels. Uh, over here on the upper left hand corner, click on projects, you can switch between different projects. Now to show our epics, on the upper right hand corner, you're going to see a star with a badge. Here I'm going to tap it and there are epics. Now one cool feature that I really like is that when you tap on an epic, it'll show you that epic in its title bar, in its own panel, and it'll show you all the stories that fall under that epic. You can tap on any story under there and edit all of the settings that we saw uh, and the website, including, uh, you can also clone it to the icebox, copy the URL, <laughs> or URL, and virtually almost everything from the website. Almost everything, at least as far as I know. Now, if you click the little I right next to the Epic's name, you can edit the Epic as well. Right next to it, you're gonna see a check mark. That's to see all the stories that you've completed. Next to that, it's a little box that looks like it has papers inside that shows your current iteration or your sprint. Click in the little magnifying glass you can search just on the website, just like on the website, and there you see the search results. So the results. To swipe back and forth to go through all the different panels, the little bell gives you notification. Now there's some things you can't do on this app. For one, I have not figured out and I don't see any option to add collaborators. Um, number two, the uh, I can't seem to find a way to modify the velocity but otherwise looks like I can do almost everything I've showed you on here with the exceptions that I just mentioned it's a cool app another cool feature is if I turn it in portrait mode I get a full view of the panel and then I can swipe just as I did before it's a cool app I can, I can really envision myself using this. Uh, I have no complaints so far, um, except for the collaborators part. Um, but besides that, uh, you can also access the Pivotal Tracker website on the mobile, on, this, on the actual iPad. So I guess there is a way around it. But besides that, I think it's pretty cool.